In the third lesson of our Quick Start tutorial for V-Ray for SketchUp, we will cover lighting interiors in two parts using V-Ray Next. This will build on concepts from our previous video, which explored exterior lighting, so we would recommend watching that one first if you haven't already. Okay, I have opened up a file in SketchUp Pro 2019 called 03 Interior Lighting Start, which you can download from the link in the description of this video. First, let's open up the Asset Editor and check our settings. I'm going to render using my GPU, make sure interactive rendering is enabled, and use denoising with the NVIDIA AI denoiser for a very fast preview. Now, let's go ahead and start an interactive render. As our preview loads here, you'll notice that there is a light gray material override on every object in the render, excluding the windows, so that light can come in from the outside. This is due to the material override toggle being switched on here in the settings. Let's take a quick look at how we've excluded the windows from the override. If we switch to the Materials tab and search for Glass, we will find the Glass material. If we select it, you'll see at the bottom of the Material Settings on the right that there is a checkbox called Can Be Overridden. By default, this setting is checked on, but I have unchecked it for the glass in advance so that the glass is not affected by the Material Override option in the Render settings. OK, let's see what else is going on in the project here. Let's clear the search and head over to the Lights tab. Currently, the light is coming from a sunlight and a sky texture in the Environment Settings background slot. Let's adjust them so that more light comes in from the windows on the right. We can do this by tweaking the time and date in the Shadows panel. Next, let's head back to the Settings, where we can tweak the Exposure value so that we have a better exposed image. As mentioned in Lesson 1 of this Quick Start series, Higher exposure values will give you a darker image, while lower values give you a brighter one, just like the exposure value in real-world cameras. Let's increase the exposure value to 9, just to tone down the brightness a bit. Alright, now let's stop the interactive render, and then from the V-Ray Lights toolbar, select the dome light. You can then place it anywhere in the project, inside or outside, since it makes no difference. Next. Back in the Asset Editor, right-click on the Environment Background Texture and select Cut. Also, before we continue, note that if we leave the Background Texture checkbox enabled, it will still cast light into our image. This will be overridden only if the dome light is used instead and its shape is set to Sphere. Now, head to the Lights tab, select the dome light, and in the right-hand flyout, paste the Environment Texture into the Texture slot of the dome light as an instance. Now, V-Ray will render the environment sky texture via the dome light rather than just via the environment background, giving us some additional flexibility and speed. In this case, I will also leave the dome light shape on hemisphere as well, as I found it doesn't really make a difference either way for this project. To fully take advantage of the benefits, we should make sure to have checked on the adaptive checkbox for the dome light below. This way, we'll make the most of V-Ray Next's powerful scene intelligence, which uses adaptive sampling algorithms to get you significantly faster and more accurate render results. This is particularly effective for interiors, where the render speed can be increased substantially, depending on the scenario. Alright, now let's start the interactive render again. I think that's looking better already. Let's now toggle off the material override, so we can get a preview of our image with all the materials applied in the project. That looks pretty good so far, but I'd like to lower the contrast between the light coming in from the sun and the illumination coming from the sky. The adaptive dome light we created makes this kind of control very easy. All we need to do is increase the intensity of the dome light to a value that achieves a more balanced look. Let's try a value of 2. As you can see, this immediately overexposes the image though, so let's compensate for that by increasing the exposure value a bit to 10. Note that these tweaks to the lighting are more of an artistic choice to get the look I'm going for, rather than attempting to follow a realistic or typical workflow. Now let's head back to the Lights tab, and as a finishing touch, I would also like to make the shadows a bit smoother as well. From the Sun settings, let's increase the Sun's size multiplier to 5, which will soften the shadows some and make the light feel a bit less harsh. Alright, now that I've achieved the look that I was going for, Let's go ahead and prepare to do a production render, so we can see how the final image will look. First, I'm going to stop the interactive render. 
Then, in the render settings, let's toggle off the interactive mode and make sure that the progressive mode is also toggled off so that we render with buckets, which are optimal for getting high quality renders faster. Let's also switch the denoiser engine from the NVIDIA AI denoiser to the V-Ray denoiser, which is more suited for production rendering as it delivers more accurate results. And, although we have set the exposure manually already, I'd like to make sure we have a perfectly calibrated exposure and white balance. V-Ray Next makes this easy with the option to turn on automatic exposure and automatic white balance, simply by pressing the auto options for each here. For this project, I already enabled the auto options for production rendering in advance, so they switched on when I disabled the interactive render toggle. Now, V-Ray will handle the tedious setup of exposure and white balance so that our image is correctly exposed, with neutral colors appearing as we would expect them, all with just the click of a button. Finally, let's drop down the render output and set the image width and height to 1280 by 1600. I'll also leave my quality setting on high, but you can feel free to use whatever feels comfortable for your system, as this render will take some time. Okay, once everything is ready, we can go ahead and press render. Note that if you want, you can use either your own render or the one provided with this lesson. To use ours, simply open up the VFB, and in the VFB toolbar, Click on the Open Image Folder icon and load in the provided Day Render VR image file. Then you can use that to follow along with the next steps. After the render is finished, you'll see that we have a nice image of the interior space. Now, let's explore some color corrections and post process effects that we can do to finalize our image right inside the VFB. In the lower left corner, we can click the Color Corrections controls and then enable the exposure parameters. Let's drop down the controls, and then let's enable the force color clamping toggle down below to display the overbright areas in the V-Ray VFB and get a better idea of where our image has been overexposed. Now we can lower the highlight burn slider so that we can remove any burned out colors. Keep in mind that setting a value that is too low can flatten your image, so you want to be careful not to go overboard with this. Rather, the goal is to find the right balance. Now that we have identified the overexposed areas, Let's toggle back off the force color clamping mode and then bring back up the highlight burn to 0.9, which I think looks pretty good to me. Next, let's enable the white balance so we can tweak the color temperature and find something that looks nice for the image. I would like to bring back a little warmth into the image and make our interior feel a little more cozy, so I'm going to increase the color temperature a bit to something around 7000. We can also play with the hue and saturation of the image as well as the color balance. These settings already have some tweaks that I made in advance that I think will work well here. I've just lowered the saturation a bit for a more photo-like result and used the color balance options for more sophisticated control over the overall appearance of the image. The color balance lets you adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights individually, so feel free to have a go with these controls and find a good color balance to your taste. Or you can also copy my settings. We can also tweak the curves of the image. The curve control is a good way to adjust the contrast of your image. For example, tweaking the shape of the curve like so. A simple S shape in the curve editor can make your image pop a bit. But again, you should feel free to experiment and find a look that works for you. We can then save our color corrections if we click on the globals option at the top and choose save. Then we can set a path location, give it a name, and save it. Finally, let's enable the lens effects settings so that we can introduce some bloom and glare into our render. With these settings, the effects are a bit weak, so let's bring in some more by increasing the intensity value to 1. Alright, at this point, I'm going to save my render so we can finish up with our daytime interior image, and then we can move on to part 2 of this tutorial, where we'll cover how to set up a nighttime lighting scenario. Make sure to save your final render and the project as well, since going forward, we're going to make some significant changes to the project, to achieve the impression of nighttime lighting.